Thank you very much, Rory. Uh, my name is Rafał Kwiatkowski. Uh, I am currently working on the development of a low to mid rise energy, energy efficient green lift system. This project is a part of the Knowledge Transfer Partnership uh, and is a partnership between the ACE Lifts Limited and the University of Northampton. I would like to thank uh, Charles Salter, uh, Stefan Kaczmarczyk, and Laura Mulher for the opportunity to be here today. The contents of today's presentation include the introduction. I will point out some of the issues of the energy efficiency and low to mid range lift systems. Then I will outline our new green lift system, following by the conclusions. Okay. So <coughs> today I hope you're going to find out how to build the most energy efficient lift in the world. <coughs> So what is the current status? A uh, high quality low to mid rise lift system includes uh, a, a, it's a, a machine roomless system. It includes a car structure which is manufactured using steel. Uh, it has a control system in a hoistway for saving space. It is driven by variable voltage, variable frequency inverter controlling gearless permanent magnet synchronous motor. It has a modern suspension with reduced diameter sheave and pulley. And to save energy, we can use energy regeneration system. So uh, knowing what we have just now, let's talk a little bit about energy efficiency and such systems. One very basic and very simple question is, what is the energy consumption of lift in a building? And this is a very simple and very basic question, and I hope some of you might know the answer to this already. Any? Five percent? Okay. I, I did some research just to find out that depending on the source, you can find out it's either five to fifteen percent, three to five, or three to eight percent. This indicates to me that this is just an estimation, I guess, and it's really hard to say what is the consumption of the left in a building. Uh, well, this uh, also, just, I just had this on my mind, if we, well, in the modern world, when most of you have a sophisticated uh, PC device in your pocket, which we still used to call a mobile phone, we, s we cannot answer this very simple and very basic question. There is, however, some good initiatives. The ISO standard 25745, <coughs> Uh, stroke two, and uh, this will allow us to assess energy efficiency of a new lift system. So we will have a chart, as you can see, and we will be able to tell whether our new lift is energy efficient or not. However, this method has got, has got some downsides. The downside is it's still based on some estimations. And I am a mechanical engineer, so I know that we can estimate something, but I really like reality. I don't like estimations. So uh, one more point is that 62% of energy could be saved using best available technologies. But why would we want to save any energy if we don't know how much we spend? And if we don't know how much we spend, we don't know how much we could save. If we don't know how much we could save, there is no motivation to, em to employ any of the new technologies. One more point here, we need to distinguish between standby and e running energy consumption, and this is very important for our future discussion. So the project drivers and how we would like to achieve energy savings in our system. There will be a little bit of mathematics, however, I simplified it as much as I could. So the energy is power used in particular time. The electrical power is torque times speed over the efficiency of the system. And torque is an unbalanced mass times the acceleration component, and this includes gravitational acceleration as well, times the radius of the sheet. So what are our options? We can either reduce the time of operation, and this is particularly useful during standby. We can reduce power required to move the object by improving the efficiency. And we can reduce power required to move the object by reducing speed, and we can also reduce the torque required by reducing an unbalanced mass. 
So our new green lift system includes uh, an MRL arrangement with a new modular lift car design. It's driven by, by latest technology drive and suspension uh, gearless parallel magnet synchronous motor using VVVF inverter. It has a control system, new control system located in the hallway to save space. It has a remote monitoring system to monitor the activity of the lift. And there is something else, an adjustable countweight technology, something I will explain a little bit later. So the lift car design, uh, we decided to use composite sandwich panel technology. This solution is currently used in aerospace, aviation, and automotive. And as you can see from the chart, by increasing the thickness of the core, we can increase the stiffness by 37 times, increase flexural strength by nine times, with an increase of weight, only 6%. So you already know that this solution is very lightweight. <laughs> It has a, a number of very interesting properties as well, such as excellent fire, smoke, and toxicity properties. Very good vibration and sound insulation, and it absorbs no water and it doesn't expand. This solution is used alongside the aluminum profiles, which provide a modularity of design. We can also use this to provide quick mounting uh, solution for the for improvement in car installation. And we can also minimize number of, of fasteners used in the car design by using adhesive joints. This, uh, our new mm, car is designed using uh, 3D CAD software and optimized using finite element modeling. So someone will ask, okay, it's fine, but where are the energy savings? There are energy savings there, however, they are a little bit hidden. They are hidden in the manufacture and installation uh, phases of the lift. So by reduction of car mass, we can also redu re reduce counterweight mass. Therefore, we can improve installation by having lighter assembly. We can reduce space, and we can reduce number of components, materials, and costs. By careful design of the lift car, we can also decrease uh, a number of unnecessary trips, something we found uh, during our uh, survey procedures. And we can also uh, use efficient components for the uh, car design, such as LED <coughs> lights, uh, efficient fans, and buttons. Our drive system as a new solution. It is based on polyurethane multi belt technology. It is an underslung, su underslung suspension. It's two to one reaming. By using belts, we can reduce it as our main diameter of the sheave. It has an efficient gearless permanent magnet synchronous motor with VV VF drive. And this smaller machine will be running at higher speeds than conventional machine with ropes. This will bring additional benefits during installation time. Smaller machine, less weight to carry up the lift shaft. So uh, the brain of our system is a new control system. It is a software-based control system. It is programmed using Microsoft Visual Technology and C-Sharp. It is based on open protocol, can open lift, and can bus. It is possible to mount main controls indoor architrave. <coughs> we embedded two energy saving modes in our controller. By using a software based system, we can achieve less wiring, less components, and less connections. Additionally, we have a standby function on our microcontroller, which we can use. So if the brain of our uh, new system is our new control system, the remote monitoring system is, uh, is a central, central nervous system in our design. This system is a state-of-the-art device that can be added to most lifts regardless of age or manufacturer. 
It transmits using mobile phone signal to the internet, so we can log in into it from your laptop or any internet-enabled device. And this system then monitors all important aspects of the lift, enabling the lift owner, a lift engineer, to make better informed choices about the lift maintenance and plan condition-based repairs. This system includes a GSM technology allowing for wireless connection. It has an ability to monitor lift performance 24-7. It, uh, it has a modern interface including Ethernet, USB, open protocol, CAN bus, and RS-485 connections. It has simple auto-isolated inputs with volt-free relay outputs which will allow to monitor opening the, the closing door limits, lift movement, interface to calls in, remote control, and generate pseudo-fault logs. We also implemented a voice transmission in our module, so it has an auto dialer. It could be used as an auto dialer. It's a modular design, which will allow us to connect continuous load monitoring module, temperature monitoring module, which with the future uh, options that we consider feasible, condition monitoring and energy monitoring as well. This is our main screen of our system. And we have a live view, so we can monitor what happens in the lift. We can uh, monitor a number of lifts at the same time from our panel. We have usage st statistics, floor level monitor. We can monitor right quality. We, we have a maintenance log. We have remote control. Uh, we can also mo monitor temperature. And this is a future option. We can monitor energy. And by having this system, we were also thinking how to use this capability to improve our energy efficiency of the system. As you remember, the energy is power used in particular time. We were thinking to use, uh, to decrease the time of operation by using uh, two power safety modes. One is eco mode, so switching off uh, a number of components on a continuous basis with a short delay. Your power saving mode will be our sleep mode. So after a certain period of inactivity, uh, our left controller will, will go to sleep. By having this, we started thinking a little bit further. So we developed a concept of activity maps. And this concept, concept allowed to monitor using the icon. It will allow you to monitor when the lift goes into sleep mode. So then we have an understanding of the operation of the lift in a particular building. And this is very important because knowing how the lift operates, we can uh, introduce even, <coughs> even more sophisticated energy safe saving strategy. So we can then think about deep sleep mode. So effectively, if we can, we can switch off the lift completely if we know it, it doesn't run for a certain period uh, during that day. On the chart here, you see a seven stripes which represent days of the week, so that we compare day to day on a weekly basis. This also allows to deploy an intelligent deep sleep using our icon. As you remember, we can control the lift from the icon as well. Future work will include annual prediction. For example, we can reduce our speed of, of our lift during low traffic period, and we can also think about putting the lift into sleep, deep sleep mode during holiday seasons when the lift won't operate <coughs> at all. <coughs> so by now you probably think, well, we've seen most of it and there's nothing special about our, our project and our development. There is something else though. Uh, there is a, there is something we need to think about that uh, if you remember our equation for power, is torque times speed uh, over the efficiency. And now the keyword here is the efficiency. Some people think that regeneration is the, the best possible option to save energy. However, regeneration is affected by a number of issues. Regeneration will never be the perfect solution. This is because we convert the mechanical energy to electrical energy and then back into mechanical energy. So if you have a very efficient system, you need to remember that by doing this, 
you multiply the efficiencies as well. This means your overall efficiency will be much lower than your efficiency that you were thinking you're going to get. And then one more thing on this is that if your standard uh, solution in this balance has normal 0.4, 4, 0 0.5 of the rate of load, this leads to a situation that in the, when the lift operates, the energy is consumed even with, when the lift goes and uh, runs without any load in it. According to the published studies, this situation occurs in 50% of uh, journeys. This indicates that we spend some energy, which might be not the best. And uh, well, that this system might be, we, we can think about optimization of the system. One more fact here is that people transfer in the building is balanced. So the traffic in is equal to the traffic out. Knowing this and taking this to account, we developed a, a mechanical design and we started to think about system applicability. And some of the strengths of our system are, so far, it can provide better energy savings than region system, and it can be an add-on to a standard MRL design. There are some weak weaknesses, though, because the efficiency is highly dependent on the traffic patterns, and this system, at present, will be more expensive than region modular. The most important unknown in our case was the tra traffic pattern. So we spend some time thinking where this uh, solution will offer us any advantages. We spent some time surveying a uh, lift in the worst uh, case scenario. The lift was a hotel, six floor lift. Mm -hmm. It was a heavy traffic changeover period, so the time when people are, are leaving, some others are coming, and this is uh, occurring on a weekly basis. And there were some problems with the survey procedure. One of the problems was that the main lobby was the not, not the only point of entrance. <coughs> there were other problems, uh, such that uh, we had some unknown traffic between the floors, so the educated guess was the only option. And this survey was uh, between 7 and 16 p.m., so the, the busiest, busiest time of the week. Uh, the conclusion from this is it's quite difficult to track and the traffic accurately, and uh, also because people are coming with, with the luggage and uh, it's quite difficult to assess how much uh, of weight we have in a certain time of, in the lift. Therefore, we believe that load weighting and remote monitoring will be a solution uh, for any situation like this. Uh, we compared the results of our survey to and uh, some distribution that is given in the, in the references, just to find out that this system could be uh, employed only on the particular job basis, and we need to spend some time uh, before uh, um, to assess what are the traffic patterns in that situation. So you can see this is uh, comparing the, the source and our results. Uh, So, uh, by knowing that torque is an unbalanced mass times the acceleration component times the radius of the sheet, we were able to plot uh, the motoring phase of lift operation, and this is showing the unbalanced mass relative to the rate of load. And I also marked the, the time, uh, time uh, roughly just pointing out that there were some breakfast and checkout traffic and check-in traffic. And this is for a standard MRL lift. As you know, the unbalanced mass is a function uh, of our energy. Uh, well, the energy is a function of our unbalanced mass. So, so this is uh, representing uh, the part of energy used in that particular situation. And this is showing our, our active system, how this uh, relates to our traffic. As you can see, we had a little bit of, of a problem during check-ins where the traffic was very heavy. However, uh, uh, you, can, you can probably tell that there are significant differences between the two, uh, two options that we have. So how much energy we can save during running? Well, I compared this, the results of our survey, 
uh, and our point of uh, <coughs> reference was the MRL lift with the regeneration. And we compared this to a, an MRL lift with a very efficient regeneration system. As you can see, the regeneration system will consume 35 to 39 percent of energy compared to the uh, to the our base point, and then our adjustable counterweight in this situation gave us 32 percent of energy consumption. And this is very interesting when you compare this to our hydraulic uh, lift, uh, just to know that you can run a direct acting hydraulic lift uh, just for one day, and instead you can have the adjustable counterweight design, which will run for, for five days in a similar scenario. To conclude, we pointed out some of the issues of energy efficiency in, in a low to mid race lift system. Uh, and I, I believe that uh, the remote monitoring uh, is a solution to some, some of our problems. Uh, and then we need more information how our systems are uh, performed. I then outline our new green lift system, including lift car design, drive system, control system, monitoring system, and our adjustable counterweight. And I hope <coughs> you now will, will be able to tell how to build the most energy efficient lift in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.